Hey, Jeremy's and Germ Mets. This is Jim from Small Time Outlaws, and welcome to the third video in my advanced programming in Monkey tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be covering generic classes. Whoop. Uh, generic classes are classes that can take in and perform operations on some data without it without it being of any specific type. Um, and if that doesn't make any sense, once again, don't worry. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to open up Monk. And starting above the main function with some brand new code, we're going to create our first generic class. Now, generic classes are typically used as like container classes that facilitate the collection of large amounts of, amounts of data of some type. It doesn't have any be any specific type. That's why it's called a generic class. So for example, if you watched my multi-dimensional arrays video from the beginning series, we created a three-dimensional array which was kind of a complicated process, but with the generic classes you can greatly simplify this process. And so if you recall, I referred to these three-dimensional arrays as cubes in memory. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a class cube and what this class is going to do is going to automatically set up this three-dimensional array for us of any type and any size that we specify at creation. Pretty awesome, right? So, once you set up your class name to tell Monkey that you want it to use a generic type of some identifier, you use the less than and greater than symbols wrapped around your identifier. And this can be anything at all, as long as it's not already a, a monkey keyword. So we're just going to use what's typically used in this situation, which is the capital T. And that's just, like I said, you can use anything you want there. And I'm going to close this off. And now, as I said, we're going to be creating a three-dimensional array within this cube class automatically. And it's going to be of any type. So we can create a field, and this is just going to be stored internally inside this class. We'll just call it, you can call it anything you want. I'm calling it cube array. And then when you go to specify its type, you're going to use that identifier you used before. So in my case, it's T. And now since it's going to be a three dimensional array, we're going to use the three brackets, three sets of brackets. And then I'm going to create a constructor that will that what we're going to have is just pass in the size of the cube that we want to create. And since we're making a cube and not a box, all the three sides are going to be the same. So I'm just going to pass in one variable called size. And now if you recall from the multi-dimensional array video, once we know what size we want, we're going to use the resize method of this cube array and assign it to itself. Whoops, I'm going to use the size that's coming in. And then we're going to use the numerical for loop. Go through each dimension in the array and initialize it. And we're going to go from zero, first index, until, not including the type si the size we're bringing in. And then once we've done that, we're going to go through each cell, first dimension in our three dimensional array and assign it to a new array of our generic type, which is T. And then as before, we're going to specify the size of this array, and then using the second set of brackets, I'm going to specify that it itself is an array. And now we go into our third dimension using another numerical for loop with a different variable, zero until size. And they will go through each of those. and initialize it once again and each of those is going to actually be the array of our generic type of this size. Close these for loops Whoops. once we've done that we're going to go down into our main function and create our cube. So I guess as you can see what you've created is this nice little container that automatically sets up a three-dimensional array every time. You now never have to code this junk ever again. All you need to do is call your cube class. So what we're going to do, create a local variable, just call it something random, cubey. 
And now, use the generic class name, name. And after that, using the same less than and greater than symbols, we're actually going to pass in the type that we want this cube to hold. And I'm just going to go with the int. And set it to new, call the constructor, do the same thing. And then little parentheses, close it off. Oh, wait, we need to pass the size. And so we're going to make this a 5 by 5 by 5 And we're done. Go to build, make sure it works. Bring this back up. And you see there's no errors, no nothing. So that means it's good. And now, to, for a more user-friendly way to get the data, instead of calling QB, you know, like this, array. Then you gotta figure out like your brackets, bracket brackets, and you gotta make sure you get the numbers inside the brackets. I missed completely. We're gonna set up a couple of methods. First one's going to get the data from a certain spot in our cube. So we're gonna call it get, and it's going to return the type that we created, type that we specify at creation, I should say. So it's gonna be the T once again. And then since it's a cube, we're gonna use the old width. It's gonna be an int, height int depth. And that's just the spot in our three dimensional array. And we're going to return that cube array width, height, depth. And for another one, now if we want to set this data to something, we're going to do this once again. We've got to pass in the spot. that we want to change and then the value that we want to put in there and this value once again it's going to use the generic type and we'll set this like so Ugh. assign value so you can see it in action go back down into QB or the, into the main function excuse me call qb.set and we're going to stick a dead center in our little memory cube which would be 2 comma 2 comma 2 and then some value we'll say 77 and so you can see that it worked we'll be qb.get and we'll get that same spot 2 comma 2 comma 2 and print this off there it is 77 that's pretty cool right you've just created this nice little class that automatically sets up a multi-dimensional array for you and you can do it of like I said any type so if we went down here to our main function again created some other thing you'll say we want to make a cube of strings so we say call it a string cube of type cube passing in the type of string new cube new string cube and we'll make this a 10 by 10 by 10 and this also works for any classes that you create so you can let's say like if you saw the last video we use a student class you can create a student QB type cube and then you use whatever class name you want or whatever class name you actually created we haven't actually created this student class in this file but I'm just showing you real fast and you create a cube it's a nice little student cube and we'll make it a 3 by 3 by 3 so there you go. That is generic classes. It's really, really, really nice, and it's really simple once you get the hang of it. And uh, I hope to see some great, great generic classes used from now on in Monkey. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Hope you learned something. Don't forget, you can email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or leave some comments. And I'll see you in the next video.